My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of thy villains bright, from every mountain side, let freedom ring. Thank you, Live Merrill. Everybody may be seated. I'd first like to uh, welcome our dignitaries here tonight. Up here on the uh, front row, we have our guest speaker tonight, past president Mark Kelly. District Governor, I'm sorry, past District Governor. And current District Governor on this side is J.D. Neller. First Vice District Governor, Monty Nelson. Hi. Monty Moore. Nice. <laughs> and, third, and second Vice District Governor, Bill Carter. In the audience, we also have some uh, distinguished guests. Past District Governor Doug Hill, would you please stand? Paul, I'm sorry. I'm doing good tonight. You're doing well. <laughs> Can I start over? And Past District <laughs> Governor Crawford Spins, please. Okay. Past District Governor Stephen Patterson. Thank you. And Past District Governor Terry Sufton is here as well. Terry. And last but not least, Kathy Crawford, past district governor. Thank you, Kathy. This is the second zone meeting for this year, and I appreciate all the clubs coming. We have 100% club attendance, I believe, and uh, that's really good. What we're going to be talking about tonight has to do with growth, club growth. And that's what we're going to be focusing our meeting on tonight. So without further ado, I want to turn this meeting over to our district governor who has a few nice comments to make. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm always ready. Okay. Hello, Zone 1. Hey! It's great to see all of you out here. It really is. I mean, this is not the norm. <laughs> He's such a big turnout at his own meeting, and it's really good. Uh, I know I've visited most, many of the clubs out here. I think I've got four left for Zone 1, and two of them are coming up next week, so you'll get tired of you listening to me. I just want to go over a few things that are happening so everybody's on top of stuff, give you a few dates and times of things that are coming up. The first one is you all should know that the spring conference this year is May 13 and 14. And those of you whose clubs I've been to know that it's in Van, well, it's kind of in Vancouver. It's on Hayden Island at the Red Lion, Jansen Beach on the water is the bulk of the conference. Now, there's, we had a little problem with this when we started the year. We were originally going to hand this down to the Red Lion end of the Key, which most of you know is down in Vancouver as well, until they called us in mid-September and said, we're closing on October 31, so we're not going to be here in May for your spring conference. So we did a little bit of scrambling, and the bulk of the conference is going to be at the Red Lion on Jansen Beach. We were able to get that. I won't. What celebration, District Governor celebration, is going to be at the Pearson Air Museum, a historic hangar in Vancouver. We'll shuttle people back and forth to that. So it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be kind of a USO style hangar dance and a little less formal than we've done in the past, a little different kind of thing. So, you know, with some of these little adversities, we have opportunities, and we hope to see everybody there. The paperwork on the spring conference is coming out this week, later this week. I just met with the conference chair earlier today, so the registration forms will be coming out. We're also going to be doing a pin contest for the conference. I didn't do a district governor pin. We're going to do a district commemorative pin for this year, and it's a pin contest, so those of you who are artistic or not, 
and want to try to win this pin contest, paperwork's coming on out, out on that this week as well. You can submit your drawings or your ideas to our contest and awards person, that's Debbie Mansell. Where to contact her will be on all the paperwork. And the winning pin design will be recognized and handed out at the spring conference. We'll have those done up for everybody at the spring conference. A little different, a little commemorative pin this year. Who's going to the Northwest Lions Leadership Institute? How many we got? We got a few out here. That is uh, a week from this Saturday and Sunday. Hal Palmer, I'm sure when he's here, will talk about the Northwest Lions Leadership Institute. He's the superintendent. Uh, and if somebody is, would like to go to the Northwest Lions Leadership Institute, come see us after the meeting. We'll see if there's any open slots that we can get people in on. That's an annual event. It's a great, great training exercise. The other thing that's kind of exciting is that you all know that as we're in District 19G, we're just one of nine districts in the multiple district, multiple district 19. And this year, the cabinet, not the cabinet meeting, the council meeting, winter council meeting, this is where the current seat of district governors get together and meet with the immediate past district governors and the council chair to conduct the business of the multiple district. That's going to be held down in Vancouver at the Heathman Lodge, and that is on February 19 and 20. And it has been 27 years since the multiple district has held an event down in southwest Washington. We worked on that really hard to get it down in this area, rather than having to go up to Canada or Bellingham or Spokane to do a multiple district meeting. So we're a little bit excited about that. Everybody is invited to these cabinet meetings. You don't get a vote, but you get to have, if you want to say something or you want to see what happens in the functioning of the multiple district, that's a perfect opportunity to do that. A week from this Saturday on February 6th is the third cabinet meeting for District 19G. That's us. That's going to be held in Cosmopolis at the Cosmopolis Lions Hall. Who's been to the Cosmopolis Lions Hall? It's a tremendous facility. The Cosmopolis Lions are a great group of people. We've tried to do our cabinet meetings in different geographic areas of the district this year, even though, frankly, most of the cabinet is located down in southwest Washington. But the district covers more than just southwest Washington. It goes up to Grace Harbor as well. And so it's going to be up in District 3. Our first cabinet meeting was here in, in Zone 1 of, of 19G, and our second cabinet meeting was out in Zone 6 out in Skamania County. So our third one's going to be up in Cosmopolis. I have, we've sent out invitations to all club presidents and secretaries. All club members are invited to that. Club presidents and secretaries uh, are particularly invited. This is an opportunity to see how District 19G functions. This is the decision-making board for District 19G. You're all invited to attend. And the Kazi Lions are doing lunch. So we'll have lunch, we'll be able to eat. 10 o'clock, February 6th, Cosmopolis Lions. Very easy place to find. Lions Learning Forum. This is a little event that started a couple of years ago. I think this is the third Lions Learning Forum, or the fourth. I think it's the third Lions Learning Forum. That's March 5th, 2016 at the Center High School. This is an opportunity to get together with other Lions from the area and outside of District 19 to talk about common issues, common problems. Little breakout sessions, it's been going very well. And the biggest deal here is it's free. Everybody's welcome to come on down. There is a website, lionslearningforum.org, where you can register, and that gives them an idea of how much food to get, how many people they're gonna need, and what rooms to assign. So get on that website and sign up for it, and enjoy your fellowship with the other lions in your district and outside your district to learn a little bit about lions. A couple of other things. Uh, I see Pastor Street Governor Terry Sutton here. Pe Terry Sutton is our representative of the Northwest Lions Foundation for Sight and Hearing, and he's been serving in that capacity for a third year, for a three-year term. He will not be renewing his term, so we are holding an election for our district representative to the Northwest Lions Foundation for Sight and Hearing. I have one candidate that's signed up so far and another candidate who's expressed interest. We'll hold that election at the spring conference. If you are interested in holding that position, I'm 
sure Terry will tell, talk to us a little bit more about that. I want to steal this thunder. Um, then let me know and we can get you on the ballot for the spring conference. There's also been a change in the youth exchange program for multiple district 19. They are going to decentralize the functioning of the youth exchange program. Anybody here done youth exchange? Nobody in this room? Okay. You have? Okay. It is what, the, the task at hand for me is I need to appoint a representative for District 19G to serve as, on the governing board for the youth exchange program. That position is vacant, it's been vacant for a couple years, and frankly it's vacant in, in five of the other districts. But that is now going forward, going to be the governing board for the youth exchange program. And they had kind of an executive director running the thing and that's not going to happen anymore. There's been a big change in the youth exchange program. In any event, if you are interested or you know somebody in your clubs or anywhere who's interested in being this district's representative to the youth exchange program for Mobile District 19, let me know. And I'll get your name up there. I need to make that appointment within about 30 days. So let me know as soon as possible. Let me just give you a few statistics that have been reported so far. I know you're going to report some more tonight. So far, in multiple district in District 19G, we have served 630,635 people this year, 35,030 service hours for the district. That's pretty good. It's up a little bit from last year. Our membership count. Our membership count, we are, as of January 1, we were minus 34, which is better than we expected to be, but we can still do a little bit better than that. So I know that we've got some new members that are coming in, and maybe this month we'll go over the top. How about that? We'll, try. we'll go positive this year. My goal in this year, my hidden goal this year, is to get this district its, it's uh, uh, recognition uh, for uh, I don't know what they call it, it's the District Excellence Award or some darn thing. That's my goal this year. I've got to get the district positive to do that. I don't know what I do to get the district positive to do that, but you guys are doing a great job of bringing in new members, and I want to congratulate you for that. So, I think that's what I have. The only other thing that we're doing is we are going around for the Spring Conference. We do have tasks for each of the clubs. We are looking for, at this point in time, sponsors for the coffee hours during the spring conference, hors d'oeuvres. Um, Monty, my first vice sister governor, Monty, is going to be having to do his traditional hospitality room, so hopefully the Kalama Lions will step up and help him with that. Other than that, good job so far this year, and I can't wait to get out and see the rest of you. So, Chair? Thank you, J.D. For those that are interested in going to the Lions Learning Forum that J.D. talked about, I'll be sending out my zone Early. newsletter towards the end of this week, and I'll have a forum attached to it that you can download and fill out. And it has on it several different courses or, or areas of interest, and you can actually pick the ones that you think are the, are the most important to you. And then once they compile that information, they will have those specific courses that are, are the most popular laid out in this program. So mark that down. That's going to be on uh, Saturday, March 5th from 8.30 to 3.30 at the La Center High School in La Center. And again, it's free and they provide you lunch. So you can't lose. And with gas prices the way they are, there's no excuse not to go, right? Thank you. Uh, first Vice Chair Governor Monty, did you have something that you want to say to the club? I know that you are to our Zone. I know that you have a lot of things hidden in your mind that you want to get rid of. So, uh, just one thing. I have uh, just one other thing I'd like to mention. The USA Canada Forum is September 15 through 17. It's going to be held in Omaha, Nebraska. If you're a Peyton Manning fan, you can always go Omaha, Omaha, Omaha. You know, uh, it. Uh, you can register now. And you can save, oh, $55 by registering early. If you register late, it's uh, another $55 on what it is now. 
Uh, so it uh, your registration fee covers uh, Thursday lunch, Thursday evening banquet, Friday lunch, and uh, let's see, Saturday. That or, or another banquet anyway you got four meals out of the year registration fee so that's pretty good uh, so I'd like to if anybody's interested in going you can get online there is that uh, www.lionsforum.org and uh, there's uh, it's very simple to do I was on it today and uh, it looks like they got 60 different sessions of seminars so uh, you can probably just about find anything you want to set in on that's about it thank you thank you first class of the governor Monty. by the way Monty's going to be running for a district governor when you come to the spring conference you get a chance to either vote for him or, or say no <laughs> <laughs> who's your competition Monty <laughs> come on he could be a ghost <laughs> I don't care <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk a little bit about the zone. I've been the zone chair now for about six months. First of all, we started uh, 2015 with 396 members. Now we're down to 375. So we want to do a little bit of growth back to get our zone back up to strength, and that's one reason for the meeting tonight. The positive thing is, is that over this last six months, we have brought in 33 new lions. 33. The bad side is that we lost 29. <laughs> but that still gives us a positive growth of force. So it's a good place to start from. And especially I want to recognize the Kelso Club actually brought in 10 new members. Give them a round, that's, that's terrific. And they only lost three clubs, so that's a plus seven for them. And then, now we're talking about Woodland. Woodland brought in four new members. And that's great for a little club like that. And Peninsula. Peninsula brought in nine new members. And I understand, uh, Marlon, that you have a couple of new ones hanging on the line, too. Fantastic. Fantastic. So there is great possibilities for us out there, and so we're going to keep pushing on that. My theme this year was, have fun, we'll travel. And the reason I picked that is because I intended to visit the clubs many times. So I understand how the clubs work and get to know everybody. And so I think I visited all the clubs in the last six months at least three, maybe four times. And I got to know them pretty well. And I did notice some things about clubs that I think are important. And that is, number one, some clubs are doing pretty good. And the other clubs weren't doing this well. And I kind of wondered why. So I kind of did an analysis on this and I basically formulated it down to four areas. Number one is protocol. And protocol I'm talking about using the bell and the banner and the gavel and the flags and all that kind of thing and the, and the, and the Lions procedures. Of course, Lions clubs can do what they want to do, but each club does it differently. And so I thought, well, maybe that has some bearing on clubs that grow and clubs that don't grow. The second area was the number of meetings that a club holds. Some clubs hold a meeting once a week, like the Pioneer Club, and the other clubs that only hold a meeting once a month. So I thought, well, Maybe that might have something to do with whether the club grows or not. The third area was the number, the meeting style. What are the, what is, is it the club, is it, is it really uh, lively? Is there a lot of things going on? Or is it more subdued? And we have clubs on all of us, on that type of situation. And then the third one is the service activities, basically the same thing. Did they do the service activities with a lot of vim and excitement, or was it kind of subdued? So those are the four areas that I've kind of picked to concentrate on this next six months to see if that may have something to do with it. So what kind of club is yours? You don't know? One way to find out is to visit other clubs. See what the other clubs are doing and how they're handling their meetings. 
I, know, I had a chance to, to join uh, the Peninsula Club over in Long Beach during their kite festival, and we actually worked with them on their beer gardens. And we had a ball with that. I relieved the uh, people that were there at the time, their older group, a group of, of lions, and they were pretty worn out. We came in and we actually danced and, and enjoyed that evening and had a lot of, 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 of spirit. As a matter of fact, I believe, Marla, can you correct me if I'm wrong, we got an application for your club out of that, did we not? Yeah. Sure. So I think that kind of thing is important. So this next six months I'm going to be working with your club and looking at ways that we can figure out exactly why some clubs are really great and some clubs aren't. At this point I am going to turn the meeting over to the individual presidents to give their reports. And what I need to do is have the presidents come up here to do it because we are recording this tonight. <laughs> and I want to make sure that we get those remarks on tape. <laughs> So, is there a president that wants to lead off? I'm not going to do it in a particular number. Anybody who wants to volunteer to come here first and give their reports? Russ? President Russ? I heard you were nominated. From the Longview Pioneer Alliance Club, President Russ Case. Come on up, Russ. Thank you. I must say it was a great dinner. Elks did a good job for us. They did deserve a round of applause. Got the report for the Longview Pioneer Lions. We have 19 members in attendance at tonight's zone meeting, including the zone chair, president, and the secretary. Longview Pioneer Lions currently have 161 members. Two associates and all dues are current with LCI and MD19. We have recently added three new members that are included. And unfortunately, we lost two longstanding members since the last zone meeting. Although summer is, a traditional, or is traditionally our busiest time of the year, we have been very active since our last zone meeting in October. Key projects and activities which our last zone meeting include, since our last zone meeting include the Street of Screams, our Kids Safe Halloween event had 3,217 3, attendings. Decorating Lions Island for Christmas, assisting the city of Longview with the Civic Center lights and the downtowners with the Christmas decorations in downtown Longview. The Walk and Knock food drive, which began, which began as an idea from our club, and bell ringing for the Salvation Army. We also participated in the Jumbo's Toy Run. Our newspaper recycling and Lions Mint Boxes continue each month, and we are in the process of new episodes of the Lions Den program on L KLTV. Collection and eyeglasses and hearing aids is ongoing. We had a year-to-date total of 108 activities. Year-to-date number of lion's hours, 3,754. Year-to-date funds raised, 64,461. And persons served, 49,501. Recent donations have included our local Boy Scout troop, MD-19 Care, Leader Dogs for the Blind and White Cane. We also made our regular donations to the Collitz Sight and Hearing Foundation, Salvation Army, Relay for Life, and LCIF Disaster Relief Fund. Year-to-date, total funds donated, 30,418. Longview Pioneer, Pioneer Lions are dedicated to attending two visitations a month and have visited Kathlamath, Kelso, and other clubs so far. Upcoming events and activities include the Taste of Italy, which is an important fundraiser for our scholarship program. This is respectfully submitted by Keith Huff, our secretary. Thank you. Thank you. Another volunteer? 
Okay, council is going to come on up, Larry. President Larry from the council club. Okay, Council Lions have 12 members here tonight. Since the last uh, zone meeting, we held our annual Christmas party for Lion families on December 7th. We had 70 to 75 family members there, including 25 children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Every year it was more and more great-grandchildren. <laughs> Um, all received a present from Santa Claus. Incidentally, we have probably the best Santa Claus in, in this county. And so if anybody, make a mental note, if anybody's looking for a Santa Claus next year, he loves what he does and, and uh, I'm sure he'd volunteer for you. We also provided Christmas baskets for um, families, uh, three different families on December 22nd. The baskets included about $1,000 worth of presents for uh, five children, in addition to a full turkey dinner for, for each of those families that we uh, purchased from Safeway. We did bell ringing for Salvation Army, which was uh, on December 9th. We had eight lions participating for a total of 16 hours. We did the annual walk and knock on December 5th. 13 lions took part for a total of 62 hours. Our recycled newspaper collections continue relatively strong. We added a few new customers. Even though the papers keep getting smaller, we're, uh, we're holding our own. We, uh, we donate about 30 hours of, of Kelso Lions per month. Um, six, six Lions are pretty much sharing the duty. Uh, we did dump the trailer once last night, and I think the number was about $1,100. Is that right, Steve? But in addition to being a source of income, the, the uh, recycling con contributes to our uh, Centennial Service Challenge environmental category. So you might all keep that in mind if you're not already doing it. Uh, our contribution to the Site Hearing Committee eyeglass collection since July, no, I'm sorry, since, uh, since January. In, in one, the last year, we have totaled 1,037 eyeglasses, 607 dark glasses, which includes a number of prescription glasses with those. Four pair of hearing aids and 125 cases. During the big rain event we had last month, we uh, an emergency support shelter was set up at Kelsville High School for uh, flood victims. And uh, we didn't do a lot of work there, but we did donate. They used the, the concession stand at Kelso High School, which was our football concession stand for uh, for their meal preparation. And uh, we donated, I believe, eight cases of water and, and soda that we had left over from, uh, from football. And our district governor, J.D. Neller, inducted five new members at the first meeting in November. Um, our membership had dipped to under 30 uh, about this time last year. And this club was formed in 1953 with 24 members, and, but I don't think it was, it's been ever under, under 30. Well, it was under 30, like I say, about this time last year, and we're now up to uh, 39. Um, Zone Chairman Doug had asked me to, to make a, a remark or two on what Kelso's secret might be on, on uh, attracting new members. Uh, let me tell you, there's no secret. Um, I said the same thing in my induction speech in June that I'm sure every other president has done. If we each added one new member, you know, we could double our membership. Simple math. And I tried to make it a point to talk membership at every meeting, talk membership at every board meeting. I don't know that that it actually worked. What really worked was a couple of dedicated members. Um, Mary Jacobs, you stand up. She wouldn't. She's not prepared for this. Mary. Mary was. <laughs> Mary brought in three new members, and her secret is, and she got a couple of secrets. She we had a garage sale. She handed out Kelso Lion 
invitations to membership to, I don't know how many, Mary, 100 people, and bingo, she got a member for one of those. Um, she went to her neighbors. She brought in two new members uh, that are neighbors of hers. Not a, not a complicated form of formula. I'm sure you, you all could do the same. Uh, Rick Roberson, where are you? Rick, would you stand up? Rick brought in five new members. Wow. Rick, he brought his members in either directly or indirectly by going to uh, people he had worked with. He's now retired, but he, he brought in some of the people that followed him into retirement and got them. Uh, he brought in, uh, one of the people he brought in brought his family in, so that two more to total up to his five. So it's, it's individual effort. It's no, it's no uh, great secret on what to do it. You just got to put your, go after it. Each and every one of you have to make a commitment to ask around, or neighbors, friends, family, whatever. Well, Larry, you know, you've got to come up with your secret because I heard that you were offering no membership fees for the first year. Is that true? You know, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? I don't think any of those members, uh, I don't think that got them into the club. Uh, they would have joined anyway. We'd already made the commitment, so, so we went ahead and did it. But uh, I'm not, I, I don't think any of those members would, uh, would have hesitated to uh, pay the dues. But it's a thought. If you, you've got people out there that uh, that's, a, that's a problem. It's certainly something you can think about. There's a lot of people that, you know, in our membership that live on Social Security and so forth. They have trouble paying for their meals or rental on a space and so forth. And we're doing what we can to make this an inviting, uh, inviting meeting place. One more comment. I, I saw where, or I heard Doug say that we had 33 new members in the zone and we had 29 that left. So personally, and I started this really a couple meetings ago, our focus is not only on new members, but it's got to be on retention. You know, for every member you bring in, you lose one. You're not gaining much, and uh, so you got to remember we're we're a bigger club now. We've got 39 rather than 29, and that means that these people have have joined to serve. That's what Lions are here for. If we bring them into the club, and they come twice a month to a to a hamburger feed, uh, they're not going to be there very long. They're here to serve, and we've got to, we've got to, Kelso Lions have got to come up with projects to keep all these people busy, motivated, and feeling like they are, are serving. Otherwise, they're going to go and they'll join the social club, they'll join the Elks. Not to say the Elks doesn't do things too, but, but uh, um, that's, that's, that's something you really think of. Retention as well as new membership. I think it's... Uh, Extremely important. Thank you. How about Kalama coming on? <laughs> and the Lion President Sarah is not here tonight. But we have a representative from the club. Secretary. Secretary. Gary, I'll turn this over to you, and uh, you can tell them all about uh, the neat things that Clyde has been doing this year. You've been doing some neat things. Good evening. Welcome from uh, soggy Kalama. Uh, uh, currently, we have 30 members. Uh, we had 34 in October, so we're, we've lost some. Two of them were two members that passed away, but uh, again, we're down. Uh, we've got... Uh, had 940 hours donated by members and volunteers uh, for fundraising and community service programs uh, in this last quarter. We raised uh, $3,182 and donated about 450. Uh, both our international and MD19 dues are paid right now. Our fundraising efforts uh, consisted primarily of paper recycling, 
We had one bingo game uh, in November before we got flooded out, <laughs> and uh, we sold a, a couple of buildings that we had built back uh, about 1985 that uh, we put up to uh, for the fairgrounds uh, in Kalama, and they moved the fairgrounds, so uh, we sold those buildings. Uh, community service support has been provided to the Kalama Food Bank. Uh, the walk and knock, uh, of course, was a big thing in December. Uh, the Lion Screening Band came uh, in uh, November as well, and I think uh, we had some 300 uh, students uh, that we screened. We also had a uh, shop with the cop session. Uh, we collected, uh, like I say, newspaper, eyeglasses, and hearing aids to uh, recycle. We uh, delivered Christmas baskets to the alone folks in Kalama in December. And also we've got some folks that do some, uh, uh, like Meals on Wheels. We had one ro uh, road cleanup session, assisted the VFW uh, flea market sale. And uh, we made some donations to the Kalama Community Building to help maintain it. Again, the shop with the cop, the sight and hearing van, and the Christmas baskets for the alone. Uh, the only visitation we had this uh, last quarter was at uh, Castle Rock. Right now, our future plans were uh, building some boxes to collect uh, eyeglasses that we're going to put in town, down probably by the library and our grocery store. Uh, the some of you may have seen the design uh, it was in the Lions magazine they had back in the Midwest somewhere uh, a, a club had built some and gave us a good design we're right now in the process of uh, surveying our community we're trying to come up with a survey form and a group of us has been meeting and uh, last night at our dinner meeting we passed out a, a version of the survey so that uh, we could kind of evaluate it. And we're looking forward to getting that out to the community to identify what uh, service projects we might be able to uh, uh, focus on in this next uh, year or more. We also are gonna do a Red Wing Casino bus party. By the way, anybody interested in joining us for that? Uh, it's on February 14th, $10 a ticket going to leave at 9 a.m. in the morning and uh, come back at around 5. We haven't tried that before, but it sounds like it might be fun. And then we've got our Easter egg hunt coming up in March and the Father's Day breakfast. Uh, any of you that uh, are thinking you might join us for a dinner meeting, uh, a visitation, uh, wanted to let you know that we had to move out of our community building when the floods came, uh, the city hall and the police department moved uh, out of town because it got flooded and he took over our community building. So uh, we're meeting now in the Methodist Church across the street. So we're still there if you come up. <laughs> Look forward to having you uh, if you care to join us here in the next month. So anyway, that's all I've got for this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Andre. Appreciate it. Yeah. President Pat, would you like to come up for the Kelso, or uh, longer Kelso early birds? We have seven members present tonight. We have put in 1,617 service hours since November. And just a couple of things I'd like to highlight that are a little different. Um, we have a program that's called Jump Start, and it was started by Jack Schloss, and he's gonna talk just a little bit about that um, so that if there's other clubs interested in getting involved, we found a real need in our community and he'll explain that to you. And the other thing I'd like to, the other two things I'd like to highlight are, we participated in the Lions um, Worldwide Week of Service, which was um, in January, I think like the second week in January. And what we did, the focus for that was supposed to be poverty and hunger to fill that help, fill that need. So we got, we assembled 
baggies that have like granola bars and juices and things that just can be eaten and we carry them around in our cars and if we see someone that is holding a sign that says anything helps we hand them a bag that has um, that food in it and so we assembled I think it was 63 bags at one of our board meetings and then just divvied them up among members and um, the other thing is a future thing that's coming up in July and I had told you about this at our last zone meeting we have secured the Lions Health Screening Unit and it will be available when the Cowlitz County Fair happens which is July 27th through the 30th <coughs> and we plan on visiting all the clubs <coughs> in our zone to see if you would like to help participate in uh, manning that sight and hearing van and we'll have a schedule so you can sign up and we'd like rather than just having a club take a day and just having one club do it for that day we'd like to really mix people up so that we get to know each other from other clubs and um, make this be a true zone project and not just um, our club project and we do have resource guides so when we come to your club we will provide each club with a resource guide and it says it tells you everything you need to know about the Lions Hearing um, Health Screening Unit and more. So we look forward to coming and visiting with you and I'm going to let Jack just talk a little bit about the Jump Start program. So Jack, do you want to? Okay, talk loud. Jack? Can you, can you use this because we need to get it on the recording? Uh, I, I just can't talk by myself. Come on. We want to get it recorded. That way you're committed. All right. <laughs> I'm committed. Well, I don't I mean you're going to be committed. <laughs> okay. Uh, we started the Jumpstart program to give every member of our club uh, the ability to help a, per, uh, a person or persons that were in need to elevate their status, maybe it be economic or emotional or whatever you want. And uh, we started it, this is the second year, it started out very slowly and then uh, all of a sudden um, the community house found out that, uh, that we had this program going and they started asking us about it and we took seven applications from them. Now we only go to a maximum of a hundred dollars, but we have we can go aboard above that. But uh, they uh, put in seven applications. We approved four of them, so here we had over four hundred dollars going in practically no time. And I found out that community house, whether you know it or not, they house the people. They take care of them, and each one of them has a uh, core health manager to help them to succeed when they get out of community house. But they don't have funds to exit the people. And so most of the people, we three of the applications that were approved were for housing. And there was one lady that, the, the very first one that started out, she had emotional problems and uh, she was uh, trying to get on her own and live in a house of her own for 10 years. Now, she was drawing money from a government resource but she had to have a down payment to get into that housing. So we put up $67.25 and this lady moved into housing after 10 years of trying. So we have this need to help community house. They have these, the core uh, volunteers are really great. They're coming, we have somebody coming to our club to speak on the 17th of February at 6.45 in the morning. We're early birds, remember that. But uh, the, you know, we would like to have you come and, and see what it's about. But uh, this is starting to take off. I called a moratorium because the cash flow was going out. We do have, we do give $100 each quarter to the program. Got to rethink that again. But we have a uh, recycling program. A couple of the members are uh, Kirby and, and Tom, they are recycling metal, so they're throwing that in there also. So it, it, this is something that we could think about as all four clubs in town might put up some money. I wouldn't just leave it wide open, 
but said an amount of funds that would go there would be so often. You can talk to me about it and maybe we can co coordinate the effort if you're interested in doing it. I think it's a very worthwhile project. If these people go out of community house and they can't get into housing, we still haven't solved the homeless problem. So that's, uh, but again, this is just not on this particular problem, but to help in, in many, many ways. So thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, sir. President Carl from Castle Rock, would you like to come forward, please? I'd like to uh, st uh, start this evening uh, with talking about our membership. We have a total of 33 members. We lost two, gained one. And uh, Karen, would you and your uh, new members stand up? Karen Crabb has uh, brought in two new members. And uh, our food bank activities, uh, uh, we meet once a week for an hour on Thursday from 1 to 2. And we, uh, since the last uh, zone meeting, we've assisted 771 families, uh, including emergency uh, distributions. For the past year, we, uh, we have 648 families on our uh, enrollment. And we have assisted 3,440 families for the last year. We have, we have 13 lines that devoted uh, 322 man hours since the last little meeting. Walk and knock, we did great. We filled it all, all we filled it all of our storage and it's the first time that we've ever filled all of our stories because they were empty. Plus, we took in $825 for the food bank. Newspaper recycling. <coughs> we have 15 members that uh, put in uh, 262 hours since the last zone meeting. <coughs> last December, we, we dumped uh, our trailer and uh, took it and that netted us $2,276. Castle Rock Site and Hearing for the year 2015 <coughs> and 16. In, in October, we, we met our first pledge of 750, and this month we met, uh, we met the other ha uh, half of that for a total of $1,500 for this year. Shop with a cop. Our local pl the police de department uh, uh, conducts this and uh, it gives the kids a chance to shop with a cop for uh, for other family members, and uh, we have one uh, member, uh, Lion Scott Naves. He's a police officer at Castle Rock, and he donates uh, eight hours off-duty time every year to the shop with a cop. New Year's fireworks uh, sales. We netted $778.94. We had a real good year this year. Some years we haven't done so well. Upcoming events, we have Krispy Kremes on February 12th. So everybody get ready for your, uh, for Valentine's Day. We'll be at the Ocean Beach Walmart store from eight until we sell out 50 dozen. So come early and uh, take pl uh, plenty home for, uh, for all of your family. And then also starting the leap year day, the 29th of February, we will be doing a, a rest stop uh, at the northbound rest area. Thank you, Brother Carl. From the Woodland Club, Vice President Tim standing in tonight for President uh, Mel, who's not feeling well. Uh, 
Okay, I, uh, Mel just gave this to me probably about three or four o'clock, typed up for me. I was, don't have a lot of information like all the other clubs have, but I was going to wing it, but there's commitment over there. So I don't want to get committed. So I'll just write what Mel gave me. Uh, so in the month of November, we did our annual uh, turkey bingo at the new high school. Uh, we also inducted three new members that night. And uh, the fire department, we donated $250 for them to help us with the setup and clean up. And during the month of December, we donated $800 to the local action center and community center where they uh, bought presents for all the kids and different families in the town. And in the months to come, we're uh, working right now on our planner's day, our Saturday market, which we do every year. And also we have a couple scholarships that we give $500 a piece for two of them at the local high school. Thank you, Jim. Uh, President Ron from uh, Wakayakum. You're Ron, and you're really Chuck, aren't you? I right. apologize. For that. That's why I have that thing there. Yeah. yeah I, I noticed you looked at it a couple times. <laughs> well, I, I don't want to forget. So. Is, it, is it Ron Nelson? <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, 15 or uh, 12 members in our club, and we have two of them here tonight. And I didn't do the math, but that's a pretty high percentage, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Our dues have been paid to Lions Club International and to Multiple District 19. Uh, we have a number of activities that we've been participating in. Uh, Walk and Knock was on the 14th of November. I know that's earlier than a lot of you folks do it. But we go when we get a request from the food bank. and. We had uh, hours in that particular drive, 49 of them were 49 hours for members, but we had 104 hours for volunteers. We get them Boy Scouts out there just working like a devil, and that helps. And we served about, uh, well, the entire county. We have a birthday calendar like a lot of you do. Uh, all the money is not in yet, but it's going to end up around fifteen hundred and forty some odd dollars. And there, once again, we've had four members of our club that have worked almost nonstop. They're computer whizzes, and we don't give them a chance to rest. Uh, but it's that's been a successful program for I'm not sure how many years. Uh, they were doing that when I uh, joined thirty-five years ago. Um, we have holiday food baskets. We donated two hundred dollars worth of food to make gift baskets for the for the needy, and that serviced five families. The sight and hearing van uh, was was visited us on the twentieth of January of this year. I'm not sure if I have it in or not there because my younger brother is the one that drives that van. So, if um, we had. 10, 10 point seven five member hour membership hours and about the same thing on volunteer a little bit and we served service nine two hundred and ninety six children in grades K through eight in Kathlamet. <clears throat> Our newspaper recycling is an ongoing thing. It sounds like a lot of you have that going. Um, we haven't had any money because we don't have a big input like you have up here, so it doesn't come in all that often. So when the trailer gets full, we get it rolled up here. Uh, that service is primarily the county. We've got little drop boxes, Cath Islands, Kamakway, and Puget Island, and, and uh, they kind of keep us busy. There are some other expenses that we've had since the last zone meeting. We have a student of the month every month for in the high school, and uh, they come out and they, they get a $25 check. And it's not in the mail. They get the check as they go there. And we get an idea of what these kids are going to do 
in the next year, next few years of their academic life. Uh, we had to pay for a newspaper ad for various things because we uh, sell berries like a lot of you folks do. Uh, sight and hearing van, uh, that was a $150 that, that cost us. Washington State Police, we had a fireworks permit. And like I said a while ago, we still got money coming in from the calendar order. The total number of service hours since last zone report with 118.75 members and 114.5 volunteers. I just figured get those volunteers into the club, it sure might help a little bit, but I'm not gonna look a gift torch in the mouth. It's nice to have them out there giving us a hand. Total money spent uh, raised since the last zone report was $1,799, and the total money spent since the last zone report was $1,800. And seventy-two dollars and forty-five cents. So we're almost breaking our breaking even. And our next event, and I've heard a couple of these mentioned here. We have a Easter egg hunt the day before Easter at Skamakway Vista Park. Um, about um, was it hundred dozen eggs, Carol? Is that what we get uh, out there in that park? And we have three groups, age groups. Each one of them has a prize prize. Um, egg or two in each group and uh, rain or shine we have an Easter egg hunt now if you're from Skamakawe you kind of realize this that it's quite a statement to make because it has rained a few times but it does <laughs> okay and um, we have not made any visitations during our the last quarter so that's all Thank you for the job. Now from 60 miles away, our furthest club, I'm going to call up President Marla for the Peninsula Club, which is a combination of Long Beach and Ocean Park. Currently, we have 33 members whose dues, and all the dues are paid. Um, since October, actually at the end of September, we did have the sight and hearing van down at the uh, peninsula and we screened children as well as senior citizens. Donations, $200 to the two local food banks, $100 to the fire hall for the annual children's Halloween party. We purchased four pairs of glasses and we purchased two, or we have uh, Christmas trees down there were called angels and we purchased um, gifts for two of those children. They worked at the Halloween party at the fire hall. Uh, they held two bazaars in which we earned or netted $371. The Nacelle Lions Club folded a few years ago and so we have taken on part of the project of keeping the park beautified and so they planted some bulbs at the park in Nacelle this fall. They've been working at the food bank and the local Kiwanis Club, which unfortunately has folded recently, and I'm working on the members, and I've got one new one coming in so far, and we also have a transfer member coming from Bremerton. Um, anyway, so they started a backpack program, which is instrumental at the beach. Uh, we started it with the Ocean Park United Methodist Church, of which uh, about a third of our membership belongs. And so we are very instrumental in keeping that program going. We also, the Kiwanis used to provide um, durable medical equipment for people that needed it, wheelchairs, walkers. And so we are taking over that project along with the help of the senior center down there. We recycled 21 pairs of eyeglasses and two hearing aids. And on Thursday at the Elks Lodge, they have a Homeless Connect project. They bring in, oh, there will be um, barbers there, beauticians there, uh, one of the local eye doctors will be there. Just all kinds of services for the homeless. And so we have two or three of the members that will be sitting there. They'll have uh, applications for eyeglasses and they'll be sitting next to the one eye doctor. Future projects coming up in May, there is a loyalty day parade. It's the first Sunday in May, which this year is May 1st. In the past, we have had a float. 
and it's a large undertaking for our small club but I would like to present it to the zone and if the zone would like to do something I did bring the application with me for the parade also on May 21st we are sponsoring the Surf Perch Derby it is a fishing derby uh, we start very early in the morning preparing breakfast for the fishermen and we have door prizes for them throughout the day and then they weigh in and we give uh, we also have hot dogs for them in the afternoon and give out prizes for the three-man team with the largest pound each caught down to third place and then the same for the individuals and a prize for the largest fish caught in June we have a booth at the garlic festival we've always done that with a raffle quilt raffle uh, we've done it in conjunction with the Kiwanis who were there to help bring in funds for the backpack program so we're going to kind of combine all of those things together and then as Doug er mentioned earlier we do a beer garden at the kite festival which is the third full week in August it, this year the dates are the 15th through the 21st last year we had music on Friday and Saturday this year we're going to have music Wednesday Thursday Friday and Saturday and it's a lot of fun Thank you, Marlon. Yeah. I know President George is not here from uh, Monticello Club. Is there anybody here representing Monticello tonight? Come on up. George. Yeah, Neil. Yeah, Neil. They can see you up here. I didn't know you were going to make it tonight. I can see you. Thank you. President had to set some priorities tonight. His uh, wife's birthday was this evening, and he didn't think it would be fit that he'd take off and come to his zone. <laughs> I'm Neil Zimmerman. I'm the secretary. And, and uh, uh, we, uh, we have about 20 members. Uh, that's uh, a bit of a problem. Last quarter, we did well. We brought people in. We, we had a net income or increase, and this time we have a decrease because we lost a couple of people, too. Um, Community service-wise, our, basically our, our, we collect newspapers. We've got 65 boxes scattered around Longview. Uh, the, the sad part is the paper is getting smaller and it takes, <laughs> it takes just as long to drive around to those boxes, but they son of a gun don't, don't get quite so full anymore. But we're struggling along. Um, we collected the used eyeglasses. We participated in the leadership of the uh, Cowlitz County Sight and Hearing Committee, right? Have I got that, Kirby? Yeah. And uh, so that's a, that's a, we used to take on a lot of that ourselves as a club, and now we've got a, almost a zone-wide activity going on now. It's really made quite a difference. Uh, we participated in the Wakanak program. We uh, managed to, uh, this quarter, to distribute $2,700 to various charities, and uh, we paid LCIF, uh, Community House on Broadway, Salisbury Army, and Butch. We've got our dues all paid up to, to, to MD-19 and to, to uh, LCI. Uh, three Lions participated in the district convention in Pasco uh, for fun and fellowship. We have a Happy Bucks program, and by gosh, the, the ex-chairman or the ex-president of our group won $350 after about a year and a half of <laughs> doggone Jack of Diamonds program. Uh, we had a great Christmas party and a good white elephant exchange, so we're having some fun, too. Uh, problems, again, our membership, and uh, that's, uh, I guess everybody's got that problem. A couple of just oddball things. <laughs> Uh, Sheila Thomas and Daryl Thomas are, at least Daryl is a Kalama lion, and we had to meet at our, our trailer, paper trailer, yesterday. <laughs> I actually enlisted Daryl to come and help unload papers while we were, <laughs> while Sheila and I had some business to do. So, thanks, Kalama, you got some, you got some time that you can give to Daryl for that. Uh, I guess that's about it, really. Uh, thanks, Doug. Thank you, Neil. Neighbor. <laughs> okay, we have a couple of new lions here tonight, I believe, that 
are here for induction. Can you please stand? Okay. There's one. Well, that's okay. We have some other new lines that have been in the club that started since July. You were here. Will you please stand? Any lines that have come to the club from July on, please stand. And their sponsors. Are your sponsors here? I would like you to all come up here and stand in front of the We Are Lions sign. And if I can get uh, past District Governor Steve Patterson and past President Cindy Sessions to come forward. Stand up, Steve. I've got to get my lighter. <laughs> <laughs> Steve is from the Pioneer Lions Club, and Cindy is also from the Pioneer Lions Club, and they're our induction gurus. And they're really good at this, so we're going to do a zone induction uh, ceremony. Even those that have already been inducted, we're going to have them uh, participate, just so everybody can get used to seeing them. President, uh, past president, our uh, past district governor, sir. Thank you. Thank you. You want to use my chair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that we can't be a little bit closer to you all, but. According to the recording system, we need to be, Cindy and I need to be up here. Uh, we are here to induct you as new members. You're uh, joining the largest service organization in the world. We are at 1.4 million members, 46,000 clubs, in 208 countries. We are a worldwide service organization. It all began back in 1917 with a Chicago businessman by the name of Melvin Jones. He started by getting together some of his fellow business people and they formed a service organization to give back to the community. And he has one of my favorite quotes which goes something like this. You'll never be anybody until you do something for somebody else. And that's what Lions is all about. In 1925 at their convention, their keynote speaker was Helen Keller. And she challenged the Lions at that time to become Knights for the Blind and to serve those in need that were sight impaired and hearing impaired, as she was. And that's when they took up that challenge. So the logo, or the motto for Lions is, we serve. If you look up here on the banner, you'll see where we now represent, are represented by the large letter L, encircled by a gold ring, and that represents strength and unity. On one side of the letter L is a lion's head facing backwards, and a lion's head on the other side facing forward. Forward for new adventures and services, and backwards for past accomplishments. I now will light a candle for all of you as you will bask in that glow of service and commit yourselves to helping others. Cindy? Thank you. Since you expressed a desire to be a member of your local Lions Club, I now ask you to respond to my words with a simple I do. Do you accept membership in your Lions Club? Yes. I do. Yes. Knowing that you're encouraged to participate in all the functions of the club? Yes. To the best of your ability, will you abide by the Lions Code of Ethics, attend meetings, contribute to the programs of your club, District and Lions Club International. Yes. This is my favorite part. By the power vested in me, <laughs> by Lions Club International, I now de declare you officially a member of your Lions Club. Your, are any of your sponsors here? No. Okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. There you are. You were missing. <laughs> um, this is kind of different because we don't usually do it like this. But I'm sure your sponsor has presented you with your. Lion's lapel pen. I will now ask the sponsor questions. 
Will you fulfill the following obligations? Be a mentor to your new lion. Make your new member feel welcome. Introduce them to other club members. Assist them in, in becoming an outstanding lion. I would like to personally congratulate you for becoming this, this for accepting this service challenge for your community. That's it for this. We do a lot of stuff at our club, guys. So we want to make, we want all the lions here to welcome our new members. Yeah. again we hope that every club brings new members to be inducted we want to make this a big deal to help the zone and help your clubs now I'm going to turn this meeting over to our our guest speaker I'm going to turn this meeting over to our guest speaker past district governor Mark Kelsch and we'll talk to you about a little uh, ideas he has for our growth Mark? Thank you. I can I can almost predict that was coming from the pioneers. Well, somehow asking some past district governor to speak or give a few comments. The few comments in past district governor don't go real well together. <laughs> However, I would point out that we're now approaching my bedtime, <clears throat> so I will try and move this along as we go. First of all, I'd like to ask our zone chairman Doug to assist me. I would like you to go down to this table down here, and from each president or club representative, I'd like you to collect one shoe. So you're gonna collect a shoe from all of the presidents and club representatives. Russ is out there someplace. He must have- Can I get a clothespin? I was gonna say, Just, just collect the shoes, and then Neil tried to sneak in the back in the back, but make sure to get a shoe from him. While Doug is doing that, I had passed out some paper earlier and passed a notebook around. Did it get around to every table? Did everybody get a chance to get a sheet of paper? Yes. Everybody has a sheet of paper. Whose idea was this anyway? Well, this actually was an idea of past district governor Doug Hall. Doug, if you'll raise your hand a little bit so some of the lions in this area can know who to blame for this idea. I mean, get credit for this idea. Except I would point out, this was at a uh, presentation Doug did, and he collected a shoe from everybody in the room. I'm only collecting from the club presidents. And you'll see why you're thankful for that in a little bit. Did we get a, bring him up on the stage? Okay. Did we get a shoe from everybody? Because I, I hate to start through this until they figure out what I'm doing here. Just put them down anywhere. They're, you're going to be passing them back out again. Oh, like, really? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. And I invited you here tonight. And right? you invited me here tonight. I told you, you have to worry when you ask the past question. Kind of did, did Russ ever get a shoe donated? No. All right, all right. Well, first of all, for the club presidents and club representatives, Neil's out there someplace instead of getting back up here, but... Raise your hand. Has your club held a membership event, an open house, or a membership drive, or something similar this year? Any of you? Are you figuring 2016? We're talking about this Lions year oh, since okay. since July. So no, nope, nobody gets a shoe back on that one. <laughs> Does your club have a written membership plan with specific goals? Nope. Hey, somebody gets a shoe back. 
What's that? Oh, you already have your shoe. <laughs> you planned ahead. <laughs> Does your club have a membership team? Not a membership director or chair. Do you have a membership committee or team? You don't need to keep raising. Look, that's good. Oh, you keep raising your hand. You got your shoe back. Need somebody else's shoe. Okay. Oh, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Does your club have a membership chair or director? And can you name that person, him or her? Okay, you got several other shoes you can hand back out. You can, you can go down and all those people that volunteered. You want the same shoe you had? Or? I don't care if you give them the same shoe. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just up here doing it. <laughs> Have you personally sponsored two or more lions this year? Somebody there. I think you already had your shoe back claimed, though, didn't you, from a previous? Yes. How about one? Have you done at least one this year? What I got All right. All right, Chuck. For those who may not have collected a shoe this year, this year, have you asked someone to join Lions this year? All right, he gets his back. Do we have anybody that still doesn't have a shoe back yet? Is that Neil? Well, Russ doesn't got his back. Do we have any more shoes? I gave them all out. Gave them all out. <laughs> Boy. Well, I had to Mike. clear the air. Oh, there's Russ. Hey, go collect some shoes. Go collect a shoe. You don't get these shoes. Well, you get one of them. <laughs> Why don't you take uh, Take Hal's? Take Hal's. Okay, Hal can be the stand-in, yeah, so to speak. Hand in shoe. <laughs> Thank you, Hal. Russ has learned delegation well. I've taken a lot of arrows for you, Russ. Now, my stats are slightly different than uh, Zone Chairman Doug's because I was looking at the Lions Club Multiple District 19 stats from July 1st, so ours are a little bit different. But in our zone, Multiple District 19 was showing through the end of December we had 24 new Lions, we lost three to death, and had 24 members that were dropped. In the district, we had 64 new, 16 deaths, and 91 drops. That's nearly 50% more than the new members we added. We have a challenge Lions, not just gaining new members, but also retaining Lions. Second chance questions, and this is where Russ can jump in to see if Hal gets a shoe back. <laughs> Does your club conduct, or at least try to conduct, an exit interview with every member that you drop? No. I saw Chuck's hand went up. Well, nope. Sort of. Well, you try. You can't always get a hold of people. I know that. Has your club worked on a CEP or club retreat within the past two years? Yes. Well, darn, you're going to have to give Howard yes. a shoe back because Russ <laughs> has that one. Yeah. Well, Doug. Pastor Sir Governor well, Doug Hall did this. At the end of it, there was a lot of shoes from the thing that didn't get set back, and we all had to make a donation to a charity of his choice. I was kind of hoping we might get a charitable donation to Doug. Ch okay, let's do the rest of the room now. The rest of the room. No, I told him I was just doing the past the presidents. Consider the service and donations that we heard about tonight, what we give to our communities. Does anyone here believe that as Lions, we've already done everything that we could possibly do in our communities? No. Does anyone believe we should be doing less in our communities? No. On switching to a more positive vein, does anyone wish we could provide more service and more donations in our communities? Yes. I think that's pretty much all of us, right? As Helen Keller said, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. Lions and other service organizations, I know this is being broadcast tonight, are essential to healthy communities. We have to provide the service. More members equals more service and more donations back to our communities. So how do we gain? First of all, we have to keep membership forefront in our minds every day, all the time, 365. Greg Firth in our club is a pretty good one at that. At least every other week, if not every week, he's usually reminding us that he has membership applications available. I was hoping to have enough applications to hand out one to everybody tonight, but I do keep one in my pocket. I know Doug keeps one in his pocket. I know several Lions keep them in their pocket to be able to hand out when you come across somebody and there's an opportunity there. I would ask that you go back to your clubs. I have a few up here to hand out, but not enough for everybody. But go back to your clubs Talk to your membership chair, talk to your club secretary, and get a membership application in the hands of each member to carry with them at all times. Another idea that we do in our club, we have programs every week. 
our business meetings are board meetings. We don't do business other than announcements at our regular meetings. We have programs every week. We give them a little gift. In our club, it happens to be a mug. And in every mug for the last couple of years has been a membership application. It's amazing how many members you can gain just by asking the other community leaders that come to speak to, you, speak to your club. The most obvious one, ask. It seems so obvious, and yet most of the time we don't really try. A great example of this I heard about a few years ago from past District Governor Brian Patton. Brian's a member up in the uh, Ocean Central Park. Central Park Lions Club. Thank you. He lives a short block, and I mean a short block, probably about 40 yards from the Cosmopolis Lions Clubhouse. When he joined the Central Park Lions, several of the people from Cosmopolis found out and said, well, why didn't you join our club? Brian's simple answer was, you never asked. We have to make that effort. You have to ask somebody. Here he was, grew up in a Lions family. His mom was an active Lion. He was a block away. He could look at the clubhouse and see their meetings. Nobody asked him to join. We need to ask. I think most salespeople, I don't know if Greg's, are you out there, Greg? Greg's not here tonight. Most sales, well, how sales? Most sales people, they usually tell you you have to ask, what is it, seven times? So don't take the first no when you're asking somebody. Who to ask? Well, President Larry kind of explained, they had a great presentation. I don't even know if I can come up with everything as well as he said it in so, so few words, but you need to keep asking. You need to keep requesting. We often hear people say, well, I don't know who to ask. Now comes the purpose of the paper that you have in front of you. Another idea I stole from past District Governor Doug. I'd like you to take out the paper, take out a pen, pencil, whatever you have. If you have to share it back and forth, that's fine. But you're, each of us have a circle of influence, people we come across every day. I was looking for a fancy example of this, couldn't find it, and then I printed out the open house publications that I'm gonna be handing out, and I realized it's on page 10 of that, so you'll see those for the clubs that I pass those out. But Think of perhaps a coworker that you work with. We spend a large part of our day, for those of us who are employed, some of you are lucky and you might get contacts from a senior center, but some of us are still employed. We spend a lot of time of our day with these coworkers. I brought one of my coworkers in in the last year and a half. We have coffee groups we're part of, friends at a gym, think of these Connections, do you have a name you can put down for any of these, or all of these? Perhaps church, many of us are involved in local church organizations. Jot down a name of a friend from church. Many of us have children, or in most of our cases, grandchildren that are in sporting events or school events, and we're often meeting other parents and grandparents. Perhaps some of those are names that you can add to this list. I've heard people say, well, I didn't, didn't, didn't really know, interact with anybody. All I know is the people that are already in Lions. But we go to banks. You meet people on a regular basis, especially in some of the smaller banks in our community. Stores that we frequent. There might be other suggestions that you can throw out. And be, I, we're running late, so I'm not gonna go through and try and get a bunch of suggestions, but think of other ideas that you have. Now, out of this list of names, I'd like to just, you to circle two names. The two names that you think are most likely to come to a meeting if you ask them. So go ahead and circle those names. And once that's done, I want you to take the piece of paper, wad it up, and stick it in your pocket. I'm serious. Wad it up, stick it in your pocket. Now keep it there every day until you bring somebody to a meeting. If you need to add other names later, you can do so. When Doug pulled this for me, I think I carried around a piece of paper in my pocket for about six months until I finally got somebody to come to a meeting. But it's a great way to make you continuously think about membership. Membership is something, as I said, it's 365. We have to think about it every day. No cheating. I know some of you ladies may not have pants pockets. Keep it in your pocketbook, in your purse, or someplace you're going to see it every day. We need to offer the opportunity of Lions service by asking others. Now, as a bit of revenge, I would suggest you all go back 
and pull this on your home clubs and get everybody else in the club to do this as well. How else can you increase membership? You can obviously do, do a membership drive. We had a great theme last time, right Hal? The theme was shove it to Palmer. <laughs> if you brought in a member and they paid their dues, you got a ticket to shove a pie in the face of Hal Palmer. It somehow morphed into Hal Palmer or Mark Kelch or Mike Julian. <laughs> but I think we brought in 13 members from that one membership That's guide right. just because so many people really enjoyed the pies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure I appreciate the, uh, what, what do you call that when you pass off a ticket of some that belongs to somebody else? Um, whatever that may be, my wife picked up a couple of tickets and I, I had chocolate in my sinuses for three weeks after that. <laughs> Whatever works for your cub. Pick a theme, try and keep it fun. Think about a membership drive. Doug, I'd also like to help, help you, uh, have you help me now and pass out one of these to each of the clubs that we have represented down here. These are copies of an open house format. It's a guide that past international director Roger Ricker put together. It's a great concept. In some communities, I think it works well, it works well if you get multiple clubs working together on it. But it's just a method to increase your success in, in a membership drive. It's some great ideas and suggestions in there. I actually, uh, having been the math major that I am and working for the engineering section of the roads department, <clears throat> kind of messed up my math. There's actually five extra copies, so if somebody's interested, yeah. we, can, we can work on that. Make sure we get them to all the clubs that are here, but there are a few extras out there as well. Another very important thing, visibility. I know our club made it, in our club, it made it easier to gain members once we went to very visible apparel. Yellow jackets and the regular dark navy shirts. Be visible in your community. It's wearing lines apparel when you're active on a project. It's wearing lines apparel when you, whenever you have an opportunity. Wear your lines apparel when you're supporting a member that has passed away. There's somebody hands pointing back there. There you go. Lion's pin. It's amazing how many times I will try and wear a lion's pin wherever I work on my shirt collar. It's amazing how many times I've had people come across at least once a year. What's that? And they ask you about it. it gives you the door open to explain a little bit about lions. As I talked about community events, you need to be visible. Banners and signs. I know we have some sandwich boards that have been going out to clubs this year as well to help your visibility. Think about an elevator speech because you may be asked about your apparel, you may be asked about your pin, you may just have the opportunity at a convention sometime and somebody that's not a lion might ask you about lions. Just in a sheer short time frame, keep it personal, keep it simple, but what would you say in the time it takes an elevator to go up? And about 25, 30 seconds, what would you say about lions, what it means to you and why it's important for somebody to join? Have that prepared because people will ask you if you're visible about that. What's in it for them? A lot of people want to know, well, what can I gain by being in lions? But if you think about it, opportunities abound. It's not just doing good for the community, but the way you feel good for doing the service. I know the grammar's a little off there, but you get the point. Studies have shown that you're better off physically and mentally by giving back to others. You have the opportunity to develop leadership skills, interpersonal skills, and to build new fellowship. This is extremely important in both gaining and retaining members. You also have the opportunity to network. No, that's not why we're Lions, but it's okay to network within our clubs. Why wouldn't you want to support those that support your community? I always try and make it a point of supporting those that support our community. Columbia Ford's a good example. They're not all Lions, but they're encouraged to get involved. Lions, Kiwanis, Rotary, Altrusa, some other organization, Community House, Salvation Army. There are a number of valuable organizations. Support the people that are supporting our community. Make it count. You can learn public speaking either from happy bucks or giving simple little committee reports, serving as a club officer or gaining training at some Lions conference or convention. Fun. Did I mention fun? 
I think that's one of the most essential things from any Lions Club. Whatever the nature of the club, this fun is so, so terribly important. Melvin Jones said, it is not given to a great many men in ordinary conduct of their lives to exercise leadership within a group, yet every member of a Lions Club has this opportunity. Group action, the ability to live with others, is the basis of our civilization. By giving the business and professional men of a community the chance to lead their fellows in activities that redound to the good of the entire community, Lions is promoting the cause of human advancement. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how we retain members. I'd like everybody to do a mental exercise for me. I want you to close your eyes. Think about a plastic bucket. There's a bunch of holes about two-thirds, three-quarters of the way up that are about the size of marbles. If you pour a bunch of marbles in the bucket, what's going to happen? The marbles are going to start falling out the holes. If you add more marbles, is it going to help? No, they're just going to keep falling out the holes. Get bigger marbles. Bigger marbles. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going there, Doug. You can open your eyes now. The important idea is we need to close the holes before we keep adding more marbles, more members. It's the same sort of concept. We lose far too many many members over the years. Uh, Pastor Sir Governor Doug, I keep picking on you tonight. I didn't even know you were going to be here when you were in my speech, but he did an analysis when they used the multiple district retention share. And I, if I remember the stats correctly, over about a 10 year time frame, we lost the equivalent of the entire membership of the multiple district. Washington, Idaho, British Columbia. That's how many members we dropped over a 10 year period. Is that, yep, that's what I was thinking. Our very own past district governor, Sam Price, observed all too often we lose members, we rarely lose a lion. We have to get people to become a lion and have a heart of service to keep them involved. Toastmasters is wonderful for teaching people to speak, but the other thing that I learned from Toastmasters is the value of evaluation. You need to constantly improve. You need to look at where you've been and how you're going. We as Lions need to know where you are starting from and where you are going. Wonderful way to do this is a survey. There are surveys available in the CEP program. There are surveys available in the light version, and I can't think of the name of it. But Club Quality Initiative. Club Quality Initiative. <laughs> Lions comes up with wonderful little tools. Sometimes they're tongue twisters, but they are wonderful tools. You can also do a, a custom survey of your own for a club retreat. retreat. Uh, I would advise the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid, model it after the, the surveys that are already done by Lions, don't go into something in depth or you won't get the response that you need. The important part out of all this is you need to develop a plan of action. As they say, plan your work and work your plan. So you need to write it down and check it regularly. Use SMART goals and share those goals to increase accountability. Does anybody here not know what a SMART goal is? So many of us have heard the term for so long. Okay. Specific, measurable, attainable, or as somebody pointed out very wisely in Lions, could be assignable, so it's a specific assignment, uh, realistic and time bound. So have a set period of time it's going to be done. Make sure there's a specific individual that's responsible for it and, and follow the rest of that. Wonderful plan, write those down, keep track, and follow along. We have to continually improve. If we don't keep improving, we're losing ground. If you stay the same, you're going to lose out, you're going to die off as a club. Just a few quick retention suggestions. First of all, fellowship. There's been multiple surveys by Lions Club International, and the number one reason by far in every survey for the reason people stay in a club is fellowship. It is so, so important. They talk about the golden rule. I would suggest we treat others better than you would expect them to treat us. We have a sunshine committee, which is basically thinking after people that are under the weather or had a loss in their family, sending them cards or flowers. But it's much more than the cards and flowers. It helps build that sense of family. 
I saw the value of this so much, I took the concept to work and it's going over quite well at work. You may take it to your other organizations, but you have to build that sense of family. Funerals can be difficult. We never know what to say, but the important thing is our presence is there. One of your members dies or one of loses a close family member, try to make an effort to be there. Just let them know that you care, it's part of your family. Club socials, sometimes our club's a little dysfunctional in that regard, but many clubs have wonderful, I know you're laughing, but you know what I'm talking about. Many clubs have wonderful club socials. We do too, we just don't always get all of our club members to see it the same way to, to pull it off sometimes. The, the downside of having a large club. Uh, visitations and conferences are so important from multiple aspects, a way to meet great people. It's a way to be together with your own club members away from a club meeting and just chat. I'd like to tell a quick story about Spokane about 15 years ago. There were some afternoon panels that got canceled and several of us on the way back from the convention to the hotel stopped off a pub. Imagine that with a long fight in the alliance. First time. First time, yes, Hal said. But there was about 10 pioneers and four or five other lions we knew from our area that, as typically is the case, will join with the pioneers to have a few. Got back to our rooms after that, prepare for the evening celebration, and John and I's wives, we went together at the, the conference with our spouses. They asked, well, what did you do? We stopped and we chatted for a couple hours. Well, what did you talk about? Lions? What else did you talk about? Lions? lions? <laughs> it, it's you know, the community service, it's what we're about. It's, it's kind of that camaraderie that we come about. Happy Bucks, I think everybody's familiar with that. Use those in your club. It helps with the communications, it helps with the people to know what's going on in each other's lives. There are many other ways to connect. I saw a great example, the Battleground Lions, down just south of us in G2, where they did a guess who icebreaker thing. You got a chance to write down something about yourself that you didn't think anybody else would know. Their tail twister would pick one of these and then they'd ask people in the audience who that person was. Okay, it was, it was a fun way to get to know other people. A lot of clubs do a mystery handshaker, blind people for not going out and greeting. It's a little tough on some of us that come, they have work challenges and get there late and have to leave right away, but it is a fun way to do that. Fun, did I mention fun? You need to have fun at every meeting, every activity, every event that you have. Shouldn't be the focus, you're still doing service, you're still doing fundraising, make sure that fun is part of it. I touched on tail twisting briefly, but tail twisting is essential in all clubs. There are wonderful guides from Lions from the multiple district and at the Lions Clubs International website on tools and tips for tail twisters. Make sure they're active, make sure they generate a little bit of humor in your club. Now keep in mind every club is different. When I was governor, the international president was Mahindra Amasariya. I hope mm -hmm. I can remember that correctly. Mm -hmm. One of the things he was pushing as a concept was karaoke. Because in his part of the world, karaoke was kind of a popular thing, so they'd have karaoke events. A lot of American clubs at that time went out and did bowling events. Whatever works for your club, think about ways to generate camaraderie. In Pioneer Lions for a long time, it was wet napkins. Now we seem to have gotten away from that a bit and not necessarily, I'm saying I'm missing it, but it was an interesting thing. It's certainly not for everybody. It, yes, it could be childish at times, but a story I want to relate to you is about Russ Lafferty. When I came into the club, part of the reason I joined is when the first meeting I went to, I saw people tossing wet napkins at each other across the room. The most common thing though is if you happen to stand up for something, prayer, invocation, whatever, or you were given an award, you better watch where you're sitting because you're going to sit on a wet napkin. <laughs> well, Russ Lafferty was blind. He was a piano tuner in the area and he joined Lions because Lions had helped him as an individual, as a blind person. But he let it be known one time that he felt a little out of place because he'd never gotten a wet napkin. Of course, who would put a wet napkin on a blind person's chair? until John Searing heard about that and made sure that Russ felt welcome at the very next meeting. <laughs> we recently lost one of our legacy members. Uh, Terry Kiniston passed away. Wonderful lion. He really did set a legacy and a trend for us when you think about it. I spoke briefly about that at his, at his funeral, but his humor 
and his positive attitude set the tra trend for our club? Does your attitude set the trend for your club? Think about that when you go back. Well-organized meetings and activities are also very essential. It's like the old Boy Scout motto, be prepared. Have an agenda for every meeting. Doesn't matter if it's a board meeting, club meeting, committee meeting, make sure that you're prepared for that meeting. As far as club meetings go, stick to a time limit. Lions Club International did a survey. They've done multiple surveys, of course, of, of clubs to look at, okay, what's working and what's not working. One of the things they saw were morning clubs and noon clubs were pretty much holding their own. The clubs that were having the biggest struggle were the evening clubs. But they looked into it a little bit farther and it wasn't because clubs were meeting in the evening. That wasn't the issue at all. The problem was evening clubs tended to run on without a stopping point. Morning clubs and noon clubs had a set time period that they had to go through. The evening clubs that were keeping to a set time period were doing quite successfully. Think about that when you go back to your clubs if you're an evening <coughs> club. <laughs> and I'm almost done for my bedtime. Well, I only have about nine more pages. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I, I'm just kidding. Hey, it's 8 o'clock somewhere. 8 o'clock someplace. Well, my bedtime's 9.15, and I'm probably getting way past there. But do try and stick to a, a tight time frame. Nah, you're doing fine. You've got a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> JD's up here helping saying I have another half hour and don't have that much time. Sir. Something I want you to think about for a minute, another statistic from Lyons. 50% of all new members drop within three years. Think about that. 50% of all new members drop within three years. So important to induct members respectively. Important to have good club orientations. If your club is small and you can't do an orientation, Come to one of the larger clubs' orientations. We're happy to share. Sponsors are important, as we heard tonight. Resp remind sponsors of their responsibility. But sponsors can't do it all, and not everybody is a capable sponsor. Some people are not comfortable doing that. It's okay to have a member that, or a mentor that's going to help out. As we said, don't lose just new members. We're going to lose all sorts of members. We need to involve all of our lions in our activities. We need to remain open to new ideas and remember that failure is okay. Don't be afraid to fail. That's how we learn. As the quote said, a ship in port is safe, but that is not what ships are for. We need to encourage and support training of lions. And I'm not going to go through the list, but you heard many opportunities. Take those opportunities. I'm happy to have been to several USA Canada forums. And I know we're going to Omaha next year, but we have several coming up in the Northwest, both Portland and Spokane have been accepted to locations. I encourage you strongly to consider those. District resources are available. I'm not sure if we have the resource team really active anymore, but you can certainly call District Governor JD if you have need assistance from outside. The good news, another Lions statistic, and I am on my last page now. Um, another good news from Lions. Over 50% of the drops over the past 10 years that were surveyed, they surveyed people who had dropped from Lions. Over 50% said they would rejoin Lions if they were asked. You have a huge pool of people you're already aware of that you could be asking to join, rejoin your club. Attitude is so important. My saying is gratitude is the best attitude. But whatever you do, stay positive, stay focused. Again, I don't believe in problems, only challenges and opportunities. We have plenty of both opportunities and challenges in Lions. But if we want to continue supporting our communities with service and donations, then we must step up to help gain and retain members. If not you, then who? If not now, when? That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. Okay. All right. Uh, very quickly now. Any announcements from the uh, presidents from the floor? Any special announcements? None. Anything from the floor? Okay. Uh, President Larry from the Kelsey Club. You have some raffles. You want to take care of that? Who didn't get a raffle ticket? 
That's who I want to draw. I want somebody that didn't buy our apple pick and drawing. My number's in here. That's part of our zone. Did, did you not buy a ticket? Well, you can well, I, I trust you. You have an honest, honest face. This is a uh, tea and a cup and beads and a couple of books. Tea and cup and what else? A couple books? And the last three numbers. 504. 504. Last three numbers. Do we have a winner? Are you kidding me? Is that the bat that you brought? <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, darling. I believe you. <laughs> okay, next, next one. Darlene, you got this one, okay? You got the book? I gave you read my ring earlier. Item number two. Okay, second one is five, six, eight. Five, six, eight. Oh my God. Hey, there's some fishy here. Something <laughs> <laughs> fishy. Fishy. <laughs> I try. That's not the soup. That's the wine. That's the wine. Okay, number three. This is the candy. Number three. Candy. This is the uh, sinful one. The candy. Candy. Number three. Six oh four. Six oh four. Same table. Okay. Last but not least, the cookies and cookie jars. And the cookies and the cookie jar. Pop, copy. <laughs> Number four. Five. Five. Three. Five, five, three. Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> You're a club, get them all? Three out of four? Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, past council chair. Hal Palmer, do you have a pearl of wisdom before we dismiss? So, well, ladies and gentlemen, speaking of pearls, <laughs> I, I'm three quarters of a pearl. I'm almost there. Hey, most honorable Governor JD, even more an honorable second boss. Where's my first boss? There she is out there. Phil Lyons, a guest. I hope you heard that one part of what Mark said tonight. It came towards the end, so you might have been asleep, I understand. He said, Lions Club International did a survey last year. They did their own exit interviews across the nation. One out of every two members that you have dropped will come back if you ask. If you ask. And I want to make sure that's falling in because is Paul Gerhardt here tonight? Or not Paul Gerhardt. Paul Spears here tonight? Okay. Paul Spears, a member who dropped a few years ago, came back. Want to know why he came back? One of our members ran into him and said, what are you doing? Well, nothing. I'm fully retired. You want to come back to Lions? He goes, oh, yeah. How hard is that? Second, one of the reasons I was late tonight, um, we had a conference call for the Northwest Lions Leadership Institute that starts next week. We have a couple of openings if you want to go. And you can still get the $150 grant. Um, the total fee is $375. $150 of the grant can, will come from the foundation. You can go on the nwlli.org, download the packet, get the packet to me, and it'll be rushed through. Um, we're finalizing everything um, towards the end of this week for the number of students and so forth. It will be a, an experience that you will remember. 
How many of you are graduates already? Look at that. Look right at the graduates. JD, you never went? Well, you know, attorneys, you can teach them something, of, but we never figured out what it was, right? Went to the Advanced Lions Leadership. Oh, that's right. He went to Advanced Lions Leadership Institute. So, you can still get in. And I was thinking about what Mark was saying when he said, be a lion. Because you can be a lion, you can help a lion become a lion. You can actually help somebody get there through encouragement, through the stuff that you know. Think of someone in your club to help. And finally, what do you think of a second vice district governor that has a Green Bay Packers pin? Oh, I had to write notes with that. Yep. With that, Zone Chairman, congratulations on an awesome meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pat, Council Chair. And maybe a possibility of going on to uh, yeah. international director. Is that yeah, correct? that's right. I'm endorsed. All I got to do is find a way to get this Japan in back. Okay. <laughs> We're almost finished. Uh, one announcement to make, and that has to do with the next Zone meeting. Yeah, a few great meetings. The next meeting number three is, is tentatively scheduled for Saturday, I believe this, Saturday the 23rd of April at 10 a.m. I'll tell you why in a second. Not at 10 a.m.? Huh? What time? In the afternoon. Okay. Marla from the Peninsula Alliance is offered to host the next zone meeting. It's 60 miles away. But she came all the way over here to tell us about it. She's been over here at our meetings. What we're looking at doing, I know it's a little bit of a drive, but we're looking at put maybe combining two things together, the zone meeting and the new officer training. If we set up on a Saturday on the 23rd, would that be something that would be of interest to you? No. Who said no? <laughs> I, don't, I don't need you need an answer now. I want you to think about this because I realize it's a little bit of a drive. Price of gasoline is way down and it's at the coast. There's some great deals on a hotel room if you want to stay the night and enjoy the... The, the, the beach. Anyway, so think about this. I'll get back to you, but this is tentatively what we're going to do. We want to combine the officer, new officer training and the zone meeting at the same time. Kill two birds with one stone. So it might be worth the drive. Seriously, think about that, and I will contact each president and find out how, how the club feels about that, okay? Any questions? Anything for the good of the order? Hearing nothing, I will then officially end the meeting.